Andrew Yang is a presidential candidate for 2020. He is uh, kind of underground, but he is sort of finding his way into some uh, media. He did an interview with Sam Harris a while ago, I believe, and he's hallmarked for his UBI proposal. And he was on Joe Rogan's podcast. Now, he's going to make an interesting shift from Bernie Sanders where he's going to, you know, shift away from Bernie Sanders and separate himself away from Bernie Sanders. And um, it's going to be on the topic of free college. Uh, let's see what Andrew Yang has to say about Bernie Sanders' free college plan and what his thoughts are. So you bring the costs down. Now, you said before Bernie's like free college for everyone. The problem with that solution is it pretends that college solves the employment problems of young people. Right. And anyone who's coming out of college knows that that's not real. The underemployment rate for recent college graduates today is 44%. So you had like a 50-50 shot if you come out of college, you're doing a job that doesn't really require a degree. And 94% of new jobs created right now are gig temporary or contractor jobs that don't have real paths forward or healthcare benefits or the rest of it. Yeah, I was reading something about um, people, actually it might have been in that... Uh, the book that I was just telling you about, Yuval Noah Harari. Harari, yeah, 21st yeah, century. Yeah. yeah, it was, I always say that guy's name wrong. It's a t tricky name. Yuval Noah Harari. Yeah, uh, 21 Lessons for 21st Century. I think he was talking about how many people uh, plan on not being in the same job in 10 years because that job won't exist anymore versus what it used to be. Yeah. used to be that people would think that they were going to get a job and they would stay Take in that it. job. Yeah, and, I know. And now they're planning that they're going to have to move, that they're not going to be able to keep the same job. And as automation kicks in, this is obviously going to bottleneck. It's going to get even, it's going to get even worse. Yeah, yeah, completely. So the ideal is that you end up training young people to be really, really adaptable and, and have low cost structures and just be able to you know become entrepreneurs. And I spent seven years trying to train young people to do just that. But one of the things I've discovered is that we're overemphasizing college and what we're underemphasizing is technical, vocational, and apprenticeship work. Because a lot of that work, believe it or not, it's actually really hard to automate. Like, uh, you know, we're not going to automate an air conditioning repair person or a mm -hmm. plumber anytime soon. And for sure, craftsmen, people who build yes. things. And, and it's good for your mental health yes. and, and a bunch of other things. So right now, only 6% of American high school students are in technical or vocational training. In Germany, that's 59%. Give you a sense of what the, the gap can mm. be. So what we're doing is we're over-prescribing college. We're saying college, college, college for everyone. It's not really working that well. And then we're still treating people who are working in trades and everything as somehow, uh, you know, like not in great careers when a lot of those careers are actually really awesome and they pay great and they, people enjoy them. They're persistent. So right now we're going to automate away. It's a lot easier to automate a away a lot of repetitive cognitive work than it is uh, non-repetitive manual work. Mm. Because like actual robot digits, you know, it's like – because if you can imagine what it would take to have a robot plumber like come into your house, I mean that stuff's really, really tricky. Yeah, and there's a lot of fine motor work. They have to like unscrew pipes and like stuff. That stuff's not going to get automated for a long time. Mm. You know what is going to get automated? A lot of like entry level cognitive tasks, a lot of journalism tasks, a lot of bookkeeping, a lot of stuff that college graduates think they're going to get a job in, but mm. then those jobs are going to disappear. I was a corporate attorney for those five unhappy months, and my friends are working on. Uh, AI that can automate away a lot of basic legal work, you know. So these college the, these college grads are like, oh, snap! Don't know what to do. Maybe I'll go to law school and like load up with another 120k in debt, and then like the the legal jobs are not going to be there for them. It's often the problem of their parents giving them pressure to go into college as well because they don't want the kid to become a loser. And if the kid, you know, like where I grew up in Boston, if you went into the trades, if you abandoned like the idea of higher college, learning yeah. and going to college. And just went right into like learning to be a carpenter or something like that. People look at you like, oh, you sold yourself short. But there's so many people that I know that went to school that just got university degrees and then they got out and they were fucked. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so common. It's so common that they thought that there was going to be this path and this path just didn't exist once they got out. Or it was, it was far, far more difficult than was than they were led to believe. Yeah, if you look at it, about 32% of Americans graduate from college right now, and that level has been more or less constant for a long time. It's not like, hey, I've got another 20% I could get into college. Mm -hmm. Like right now, the college completion rate 
in six years is about 59%. So like four out of 10 people who start college are not graduating in six years. And a lot of them are just not going to finish ever. So like the, the people that have other paths available to them, we have to build those paths up. And this is one reason why I'm so into the freedom dividend instead of something like free college. Because why would you subsidize something that only the top third of the population is going to use? You know, and, and it's a highly inefficient, costly system anyway. Like yeah. plowing money into that, you're much better off putting a thousand bucks a month into every 18 year old's hands than if they go to college. Great, college is partially paid for. They go to trade school. Great, trade school is partially paid for. They start their own business. They do something creative, like they want to do something to help. That's great too. Like you can actually start building more varied paths and make it so that people don't feel like I need to get into this institution or else my life's going to be over. Yeah, so I, I don't agree with Andrew Yang at all here. I think that college should actually be the goal. I think that a lot of people are hampered by their student loan debt, but there is certainly uh, like maybe a point to be made that we should try to you know have influence more people to go into higher paying fields or whatever. Because I think that there's like this weird conspiracy going on in the right wing where it's like the real, you know, Ben Shapiro wrote an article saying the real reason why Bernie Sanders wants free college is some dumb like conspiracy of like they all want college so that they can infiltrate the schools and they can all get paid money. And it's like that's not the re that's not the reason why the reason is because it's education to get a higher pay it has nothing to do with SJW or whatever crap that you're drunk on. But. I don't agree with Andrew Yang here, and it, it, this is kind of a weird position. Some like weird, like you know, futuristic prediction of like, oh, you know, fifty years down the line, twenty five years down the line, this, 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 this college job, uh, you know, college degree jobs are going to be gone. So you know, don't go or whatever. And going into vocational school, okay, but dude, most people don't want to do work like that. Like you know, being being some sort of a plumber or something like that. It also. You're not going to make, you know, as much money. And I don't know what the incomes of plumbers are. I think those are kind of, you know, arbitrary to say the least. But, you know, most people don't want to do that kind of labor. So that doesn't make sense. Like most people don't want to do that. And they're not going to do that because it's a it's a hard job that doesn't result in much money. Um, and in, in times now where we have, you know, upgraded technology and everything, how many people want to be plumbers? How many people want to do that kind of stuff? So... Um, I really don't agree with the idea of, oh, we should influence people to go to vocational schools rather than college. I think vocational schools are good if you want to get a higher paying job to do that. But the primary goal should be college. That should be the goal. So you should get a degree in something that, you know, you can make good money in. Um, and that, sh that should simply be the goal. So he has this kind of weird futuristic prediction of, hey, all these jobs are going to be taken out. Uh, based on, you know, ro robots and automation taking them over. And so, do you know, don't go to college, don't get a college education, and basically um, go into vocational schooling or whatever. And there's also another problem with this, too, is like there's a really big risk when you don't go to college. Because if you, and I think Joe Rogan touched on it there where he said a lot of people are scared of not going to college because they're afraid of turning out to be losers. And the reason why that is is a is very obvious one. If you don't go to college, um, you know, you the odds of you getting like a, a decent paying job are much lower. The pathway as well, I mean, what are you going to do? There are the exceptions to the rule, like Joe Rogan, for example, who I think was at like an adult education program at Boston University or something like that. And he ended up dropping out. But and then ended up being insanely successful. But there's only one Joe Rogan. There's not, you know, there's not a shit ton of Joe Rogans out there. It's just one Joe Rogan, and you're watching him right there. So there's an exception to the rule, but certainly the goal should be to go to to go to college. And also, we need to, uh, you know, figure out, you know, maybe we just wipe out, you know, cancel student debt period the same way, you know, the uh, we can have the Fed just buy off all those loans the same way that they did in the in the 2008 crisis where. They just bought, you know, at the time they said, oh, these are all toxic loans. We're going to buy them off you. Um, and so we could do the same thing here. Um, and it would be a huge economic uh, boost. And I don't understand why is there this weird uh, situation where we always seem to have the position of being against you having programs tax funded that benefit the people in the United States. I don't understand that. Like, why is it that... Every time we have something like that, 
we don't have the same conversation as we do as every fucking year there's a military increase. We never have that kind of a conversation. So how do you fund free college? There are a couple of ways to do so. A, you can have a 1% Wall Street speculation tax that should cover, I believe it was most of the money. Um, and, or you could just reroute all of the funds that we keep doing military budget increase. So the last military budget increase, I forgot the exact number that it was. I think it was 70, uh, you know, 70 billion per year, which turns out to be 700 billion over 10 years. If you're to just reroute that to funding for college, it's free. That's it. It's, it's, it's not like some pipe dream. This is not crazy expensive. This is not something that's totally, you know, unbelievable. And, um, I don't know why the point of having free college education in any way is negated by people going to community college and dropping out. I don't understand what that has to do with it because A, if you have, you know, free college education, if someone goes to college and then drops out, what what change what difference does it make? I don't understand. Like you still have a you have a free apparatus and if they don't want to go to college, they don't go to college. I don't get it. So you have that sort of a thing and then you have um you know, it is easier to sort of drop out in that situation anyways. So people can be, you know, people are typically more committed to something like if you're at a UC than you are at a community college. A lot easier to drop out of community college than it is when you're sort of, you know, tethered and, and geared in and trying to get to the finish line at a UC, a UC or a state school or whatever. So I, I really honestly uh, don't, I don't understand that. And Yang also has this position as an entrepreneur. And he makes it seem like, or at least this is the way he comes off, is like, everybody can be an entrepreneur. That's not true, dude. For the masses, everyone's not going to be, not, not even close to half are going to be entrepreneurs. And part of the vision that he has is, in the future, people, um, you know, having these passion jobs, or ones that, you know, aren't necessarily going to be, you know, be, you know automated or whatever. But the problem with that is your plan of universal basic income of a thousand a month, that ain't shit. So you can't do whatever passion job that you want off 12K a year. That doesn't make sense. So he has this weird thought of like everyone's going to be an entrepreneur, you know, you know, be an entrepreneur and kind of do your own thing and don't go to college. No, I don't agree. Go to college, you know, make sure, by the way, make sure you get a good degree. Don't just go to college. But get a good degree that pays money. That's what you you know that you can get a job with that pays money. Don't go to college and you know get a gender studies degree. I really don't recommend that shit. I don't even know what job you could get with that. I mean, maybe a you know gender studies professor. But do you really want to teach gender studies? And do you? I don't even think the pay for that is that well. So definitely don't go into gender studies. Um, go into so, you know somewhere in the medical field or just any you know. There's so many fields to you know make money in. And this kind of futuristic thought is not helpful to, okay, guys, go into vocational schooling or be an entrepreneur. That's just not a reality, you know, the reality of options. And if you are to not go to college, you're really putting yourself in a risk phase because what are you going to do? Like, what is your backup plan? I don't understand what's going to happen. I mean, not everyone wants to go to, not even close to everyone wants to go to vocational school to be a plumber or an electrician or whatever. So I don't understand this. I, I this really kind of was out of left field. It's not that expensive to pay for free college. All we have to do is reroute this unbelievable, maniacal uh, boost that we have in the military budget over here. This isn't even like um, Medicare for All, where even though it's going to cost $32 trillion, it's cheaper than our current system. It's not even like that. It's not even like that. It costs like $80 billion a year. That's it, which is what we have in increases in military budget every fucking year. So it doesn't, it, it, this isn't that hard. It's not something that's like, shit, man, the numbers just don't add up, dog. No, that's not it, fam. That just isn't it. So anyways, also, I want to say that other concerns about Yang, he's clearly a technocrat. He's a uber entrepreneur, and that very much concerns me. It seems like he sees the robots coming, and he wants to, uh, you know, <laughs> he wants to maintain the capitalist system. Um, while also keeping up the, keeping the people from being in a position to revolt. So he wants to, you know, try to put 1k a month in the pockets of people, but he's doing that in a way to benefit the technocrats so that they don't get, uh, you know, 
they don't get revolted against. Also, another thing is he also wants to sunset all regulations in place for five years or more, which is stupid. He also wants to um, he wants to transfer. He wants to phase out public sector jobs like almost all he wants to. I don't remember if it was almost all or all. He wants to phase out um, a shit ton of public sector jobs and he wants to transfer them to the private sector. So what's clear to me is this is kind of like a, oh, I'm trying to benefit the capitalist class by implementing this, I'm going to give you 1K a month shit. That's what it seems like to me. It's very weird and hard to explain, but hopefully you understood what I'm trying to say there.